In today's video, you will hear tips to improve your aerial moves to help you to go from this to this. If you're not yet comfortable with the aerial hammock, first check out these two videos because today we will be talking about how to improve moves that you already know. Basically, we'll focus on two main ways to clean up our transitions today. First is to include the transition movement like going to a sitting or a standing position as part of the flow. Another one is to go directly from one pose to another so it can be as clean as possible. Whether you're a beginner in aero yoga or aero sling, here is how you can perform aero hammock like a pro with just a little bit of confidence and a little bit of tips. Before we get on the hammock today, we are going to spring all four on the ground and then we're just going to round our spine and then extend it again. We're going to repeat this five times and every time when you repeat it, you want to try to exaggerate the movement just a little bit more. We're going to stay in this position and then now I'm going to circle my spine to one direction five more times and keep breathing. And then when you're done, go to the other direction too. Really try to feel the muscles on your back. So now we are ready to come up to use the hammock. We're going to grab the hammock in front of us just like this. I'm going to slowly Roll my body all the way to 90 degrees with my legs and then reverse to come back. So one more time. First, I tuck my head in and then my shoulders, mid back, then round the lower back, round it as much as you can. And when you cannot anymore, forward and extend, just like what we did on the ground. And then reverse, round, 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 to come back. Now let's repeat this a couple more times. The goal here is to feel the separate sections and to really feel the movement. Also a very nice stretch. So one last time. Okay, now we're ready to sit on the hammock. I am now sitting my hip below the hammock. So everything is round. To do a body roll from this position, first, we're pushing our stomach forward. Then, the chest. And then finally, pull yourself in. So let me show you one more time. Everything round, push forward, look 
notice that my head is going back as my stomach is pushing. And it's the last one to come back to exaggerate the movement. Now let's advance a little bit. I'm going to bring just one leg in the hammock. I will do the exact same thing, but just adding a small movement by bringing the leg in. So now I have one leg on the hammock. I'm stepping this leg here. Same position, everything around. And now I'm pushing my stomach. Move back, chest, and then now my head. And then now slowly bringing this foot, stepping on the hammock, pushing the stomach, shoulder blades, hold to this position. From here to go to standing, all I have to do is to straighten this leg. And I go through this pose. Then I push my hip. Again, to standing. If you've been practicing hammock for a while, then you should be pretty familiar with straddle and then climbing up to the first sitting position. There are a couple of beginner mistakes that I used to make that I now know how to do better, which is what I'm about to show you now. So you should already know, hammock is around. So you can lean down. If you're still swinging and you don't know why, here's maybe two reasons. First is you're starting a little bit away from the ray. So for example, if I lift my leg now, you're going to see I'm swinging everywhere. Or even if you're starting directly under the ray, you're still going to swing if you kick your legs up. For example, let me try. So you can see now I'm still swinging a little bit because I added a little bit of strength when I was bringing my leg up. So all you have to do is to lean out and then slowly bring them up to a straddle. Let me bring this up to look at the camera. And then now I'm not swinging. From here, you want to make sure your legs are nice and strong. You don't want to see legs like this, it's not that pretty. So just nice and strong, keep them straight, bring them together, put them in the fabric. Usually everybody gets this. The next one is the challenging one because you need your core. You want to use your core to swing your upper body up so you can grab the fabric. So you can come up here. Then I used to do something like this. I climb, I climb, I climb. I feel that my arms are so weak. So I'm not really going up as fast as I would like to. But I keep trying to focus too much on my arm. This is what it looks like if I just use my arm. And you can see, I don't get to the position right away and it just looks kind of not sure what I'm doing. So now I know how to try to use the rest of my body to support my climb. It's really not just about my arms. My arms are here to grab as high as possible so I don't have this unclean movement in between. The next step is I am kind of digging my knees into the fabric. At the same time, I'm pushing my legs down. So look, I'm pushing my legs down so I gain height at the same time. And my arms only need a little bit of strength to just pull myself up to go into this position. If you're just starting arrow hammock, the first thing that you're going to notice is that wrapping your legs really hurts a lot. I still remember it was very painful before and I get a lot of questions asking me, how come some people can sit in this position for such a long time and I can't even stay here for one minute or one second? If your first sitting position looks something like this, then it's very likely that your wrapping is really hurting your legs because this is me not engaging my legs. So when I'm toughening, toughening them up, keep them stronger, it looks something like this. This way, 
my legs are much stronger and I feel the wrapping much less and I can stay in this position for longer and also for a more cleaner look. For the first sitting position, there are a lot of tricks you can do after. For example, you can bring the legs together so you can spin really fast. You can bring them to the back if you have an amazing back bend. I like to bring it to the side so I can do a hip lock. But let's come down to the ground to get a feel of the movement. Notice that my hip is now facing this direction. All I'm doing now is to use my hip to bring my body to face the other direction. And then now I'm coming back. So this is what the movement feels like when you're doing a hip lock. And now we're going to go to the air and seat. So once again, I'm in this position, just like when I'm on the mat, my hip is facing this side. The easiest way to do this is first, I'm grab, I'm hugging the hammock with my upper body as close as possible. So I have the maximum strength. The next step, I am thinking that my hip needs to face that direction. And then I'm just bringing it, I'm keeping my legs close and then bringing my hip to face here. So this is the first and easier version. Now coming back here, if I want to add a fan kick and I cannot do it just yet, I will start also from my upper body, hugging the silk close. The next thing I do is to swing my bottom leg. Swing, swing, and I go down. So now you can see, again, I'm in the hip lock position. Once you get stronger, you can take out the swinging and just directly do a fan kick to get into a hip lock. So when you get a little bit better, notice that when I swing my leg from here, before it lands on my other leg, I control my leg to let it land slowly. If I don't control my legs, it's going to look very sudden the moment this leg hit the other leg. So make sure, when you're a little bit stronger, work towards controlling the leg to slowly bring them together. And when you're in this position, you know, after you try so hard and finally get here, don't, do, don't keep the legs like this. Keep them close, you can cross them, bring them together, keep the feet pointed to look more professional. And then you can come back, we're in the same. The first thing I want you to think about with leg movement is to keep your toes pointed. Sometimes we do have flex movement in the dance, but most of the time you see that we want to have strong and beautiful legs and pointing the toes will help you to direct the energy and also feel the strength. So for instance, I'm going to start my spin like this. And you really see my leg is pointing the direction. When you go from one position to another position, directly think about the next one and want to go there as quick as possible without small movement in between. Let me show you an example. Now, my leg is bent and I want to go into this position. So now, I'm thinking about this. When I'm ready, I am directly bringing my body into this pose. If I don't think about the next position that I want to go, you can see my transition is less clean when I don't focus on going from A to B. When you're adding arm movement in your flow, it will make your body more extended and open so you can have a greater presence. <laughs> I also used to not know what to do with my arms and I would just try to really reach instead of really extend and direct. So two tips that I have for you for adding arm movement is to make sure that your hands have energy and direction. You should feel like you're pushing the air away rather than just letting it go everywhere.
Aerial dance is a free and creative sport. You can do it however you like as long as it's safe. But if you like my style, then these are the tips that I have for you to try in your next practice. If you only work on them, then they will naturally be included in all of your future vlogs. Leave me a comment if you have any more specific questions, and I will see you in the next video in the next few days.